I have collected here all the results that we have derived in the context of one dimensional oscillators. So here you see the first entry is that of a free oscillator, meaning there are no there is no damping, neither there are any external forces. So here omega square is the natural frequency of the oscillator okay and um, this depends on the for example mass or the spring constant okay actually the ratio of it and the solution is a cos omega t plus alpha so here the omega is same as what you have here on the left hand side and alpha and a are dependent on your initial conditions okay what you choose the initial conditions to be and of course you can choose your um, time such that alpha can be um, removed okay then we talked about uh, the same oscillator but now this time it is acted upon by some external agent and which is uh, periodically uh, and which is uh, exerting a force which is periodic and that external agent has a periodic force with uh, frequency gamma and beta is some phase that we have chosen for uh, for that oscillator okay and the general solution we found to be you have the same thing uh, corresponding to the homogeneous part so if i put the f to be zero you have a free oscillator or equivalently um, a homogeneous equation so this is the homogeneous part of the solution and then you have to search for a particular solution which is what is in here okay so note that the amplitude of this piece is completely determined there is no freedom in choosing this okay so f over omega square minus gamma square there is no uh, you cannot choose some um, some initial conditions and accordingly this will be different it's fixed for for your system and also this part of oscillation is happening at the frequency gamma okay then we looked at forced oscillators at resonance so here if omega is gamma this appears to be blowing up okay so we need to find the solution so we uh, we wrote down the equation again and this time i have just chosen beta to be zero there is no need to carry around a beta a phase um, and we found the solution to be in this case given by of course the homogeneous part will be the same as you got in here it's the same identical here but now you see that the this piece which is coming because of the uh, for forced oscillations i mean because of the external force this is growing with time linearly okay so clearly after a while uh, the q will not be small anymore and our physical assumption in writing down this will not anymore hold the equation is fine this it's mathematically it's good but our physical assumptions of small oscillations will break down and this will um, not be a correct description of uh, the system then we looked at damped oscillations oscillators so we assumed that there is a friction present which can be described by this term so that the forces are linear in velocities okay so this is what you get this equation is still a homogeneous equation and we saw that there are three uh, possibilities one is an over damped uh, case another is critically damped and in in these both cases we saw that the amplitude decays exponentially with time and then there was another case which we call damped oscillations maybe i should write here oscillations where the solution has this form so this is again not a periodic motion but it is definitely oscillatory oscillatory and the oscillations are having a frequency omega d which is lesser than the natural frequency because lambda is positive here so you see uh, omega d is lesser than um, the natural frequency and of course the amplitude of these oscillations also decay with time so if you wait long enough because of this exponential the 
q would be uh, zero okay or practically zero so that is what happens in damped oscillations now what we want to do is to look at uh, again a one dimensional system which is experiencing damping due to some friction which is present maybe air or whatever and also there is an external agent which is applying a periodic force on it okay so that is what we want to do next and clearly um, okay let's see what 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 comes out of it let me not say beforehand so now we will look at um, one dimensional oscillator what happened Okay, so we will look at 1D oscillator um, in, I mean, with damping. and external forces external apply external force okay so let's write down what the equation of motion would be okay so if the oscillator was not having any um, damping and without damping if its natural frequency is omega then this would be the equation okay this would be zero so let me not write zero right now okay now if you allow for damping okay uh, of the kind which we have already talked then I see that I have to introduce a term proportional to velocity and then I allow for external force which is periodic and I choose it to be cos gamma t plus beta okay, so let me keep beta here okay um, that's fine now our experience with the case of damped oscillator when we looked at this with the uh, right hand side being zero um, with that experience we can immediately see that we should look at the associated complex equation okay so instead let instead let's look at the following equation I will look at Z double dot plus lambda Z dot plus omega square Z equal to f e to the i gamma t plus beta okay where your lambda omega square f gamma and beta are all real numbers okay so if I take a real part of this entire equation I will be able to uh, get this one okay okay that's good now this is again a linear equation linear differential equation but now it's non-homogeneous linear equation and non-homogeneous and our Q the solution would be real part of Z right and okay let me first okay that's fine that's okay no problem now let's me uh, let me look at the solutions of this equation this complex equation so I what I do is um, I say that Z is of the form K 
e to the i gamma t plus beta and we substitute this because this is the only possibility that's going to work right because whatever z you take of of e to the i um, ex exponential of something they will all return back the z but for this to work your z should have um, in the exponential this thing otherwise it will not work so that's why we have this choice but k is um, k is to be determined and k is complex okay. we are looking at complex equations okay so now you substitute this z in in this equation okay and you get the following so substituting z in let's call this as one star two let's put um z the, the one in two in one star so what do you get i hope you have meanwhile i was writing you you were deriving it so you get minus gamma square plus i lambda gamma plus omega square and this entire thing is equal to f okay now um you can write k as maybe yeah here itself so you can write k is equal to f omega square minus gamma square plus i lambda gamma i hope you have already noticed that the problem which you were having at resonance earlier uh, is not here it's not blowing up okay the, uh, it's getting regulated you'll see it more clearly when i write down the uh, the k in the polar form okay so now what i will do is i will write k in polar form so i am expecting k to be something like r e to the i phi okay where r and phi will be real and i have to determine r and phi and clearly how do you get r r is just the square root of k k star this is complex conjugation okay now if you uh, sub make the substitution you are going to get the following f over omega square minus gamma square plus lambda square gamma square the entire thing in the square root and what will be the phase phi phi so if you take 10 phi you will get lambda gamma over gamma square minus omega square okay that's good so mm where were we real part of z is correct and this fine so here i have to put in the k in the polar, um, polar form and combine with this so i have here e to the i phi so that phi goes and sits in the exponent together with beta so the phase gets shifted from beta to beta plus phi 
and the amplitude would be what you have here for r okay so our um, where is it um, z so z becomes f over omega square minus r square plus lambda square sorry not r square that was gamma gamma square plus lambda square gamma square okay then you have e to the i let's look back gamma t plus beta and then as i said you will have alpha also not alpha phi i have been calling it phi okay so our solution q is the real part of z which is again this thing bored of writing this again and again anyway let me write it down and then you have cos of gamma t plus beta plus phi okay now this is not the full solution this is just a particular solution of this equation right this is just the particular solution now if i add to this um solution corresponding to the homogeneous part homogeneous equation if i put the right hand side to be zero that will also be a solution so let me be more precise and put this as um this is not the final solution okay this is this part is just the um a particular solution and i should add to this a cos of what okay let's go back so if this is right hand side is zero okay this is the equation right and this is the equation which you had for the damping case this homogeneous equation so i sh i will get what you got there last time all those three possibilities have to be considered but let's say i um let me go back and write down here so damped case a e to the minus lambda over 2 t cos omega d t plus alpha okay omega d t plus alpha let's write down omega d t plus some phase alpha something here and it was e to the minus lambda over 2 t let's check correct so that's what you will get right that's the solution and as you can see that as time progresses this piece will just die away it will just be not there okay it will so this is called the transient part it's there while the uh, transition is happening from this solution to only this part so when everything has settled down this part has disappeared disappeared uh, your oscillator is oscillating steadily in this part we say this is in a steady state oscillation this is the steady state part okay so you see the um oscillator after a while is just oscillating with the frequency of the external agent gamma right that is the one it's not the omega which determines the frequency it's the gamma which determines the frequencies but also note that the oscillator is not oscillating as cos gamma t plus beta so it is not in phase with the external agency there is an additional phase phi okay it is out of phase okay and that phi is given here and i will encourage you to figure out 
five for different cases and the amplitude of oscillations is here it's not blowing up as it looked like earlier and uh, it is getting regulated by the coefficient lambda here okay it's it's regulated by lambda so if you put lambda equal to zero you see that at uh, resonance omega is gamma and it blows up but it's getting regulated now okay that is fine yeah and also note that all the uh, parameters that you could have chosen depending on your initial conditions are in here this and this a particular solution does not contain those parameters so there is nothing you can control here by initial conditions okay once you have chosen um, the external agent your uh, system which is going to oscillate and the lambda is given okay your solution is completely fixed this part the steady state part there is nothing to choose and uh, fix those parts we have uh, those parts uh, which can be chosen are or fixed are in present in the transient part which dies away anyway okay so this is for our um, one dimensional oscillators now next we should be looking at um, a system near its equilibrium okay um, and then look at small oscillations around that equilibrium when there is external agency uh, present and there is also some damping present okay so that is what we will look at next